Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Nerds the Human, and welcome to the special Games Gone edition of Medieval 2 Total War. Today, we look at the authority trait, exactly how you can gain it, because we really do not want leaders like this one, Sultan Al Mustanir the Fat. Yes, he's got very little authority, and you can see there are rebels popping up everywhere around him. So, we want to try and increase this trait, and we're going to look very closely at how you can do that. For this, I've got three major tactics good genes, because at the moment, this guy's a bit ugly and a bit untruthful. And we can't do an awful lot about that. We probably should have killed him off a bit earlier. We've got education, how you can make them better through your cities. And also the rulership style, extreme chivalry, or indeed, more likely, the extreme genocidal murderer. Before we do that though, I just want to show you what happens if you give him way too little authority. Because actually if you get too many negatives, like Liar 4 will give him, you'll suddenly realise that he gets full authority. The game kind of gets so many negatives that it ticks over to full. So there's one way you can kind of break the game to make this happen. See there, now he's got Pathological Liar. And yeah, suddenly his authority is up at full, even though that should actually be minus 3 authority. So yeah, bizarre little one there. But let's get into the actual tactics now, shall we? Let's take a look at how traits work then with this example here, Good Diplomacy. Now what we see in the quotes here, Good Diplomacy, is the name of the trait inside the game files. And obviously they do work in stages, so you can move up to Good Diplomacy 2, Good Diplomacy 3, Good Diplomacy 4. And on the right here what I've got is their in-game name, the sort of thing you'll see on the character card. The last thing to look at is these T's on the right here. This refers to Threshold. Now basically, in order to get yourself from one of these stages to the next stage, you're going to have to enact a certain trigger. So for example, if you win a battle, you get a trigger towards Good Commander, and you might well pick up that trait. If we have T2 here, the threshold of those triggers is 2. So we need to have 2 triggers for Good Diplomacy in order to actually pick up Good Diplomacy 1. Now actually, Diplomacy here is actually a bit of an odd one, because this trait doesn't actually have any actual triggers in the game files. I don't know if they missed it, or they just decided to leave it out. In theory, this should be good for authority, but there actually aren't any triggers for it, so you can't actually pick up this trait as far as I'm aware. Out of the 26 traits that can give you authority, 5 you can only get from birth. Now that might be a lucky dice roll. For example, Handsome is a trait that you might get when you adopt a particular person into the family. But it is also more likely if, for example, the father is Handsome. That kind of makes some sense. But these are traits that you can't pick up later in the game. The 5 being Handsome, Energetic, Liar, Anger and Father's Legacy. Pay close attention if you pick up Liar or Anger. Anger. Both of these are starting traits which actually do boost your authority, or at least on their lowest stage of one. As you go up, Liar will become a negative to authority, and the same goes for Anger. Anger actually is particularly interesting, because if you look at it, certain factions, Hungary and Spain, have a higher chance of picking up that particular trait. And obviously while it's good for your authority in the early stage, the chances are it's going to develop into something worse. The reason for this is that these four traits, Handsome, Energetic, Liar, Anger, are all self-perpetuating. So essentially there's a chance every turn that you are going to raise up to the next level of that trait. It's not something you can get rid of, but it might get more extreme. Now obviously for Handsome and Energetic, that's absolutely fantastic. You want those to keep moving up, you'll gain lots of authority for it. But for Liar and Anger, they're a ticking time bomb. You really want to be aware if you've got those traits, whilst it's maybe not worth drowning them straight away, you've got to bear in mind that, that could have a big impact on your authority going forward. The last of the genetic traits is this one here, Father's Legacy. And this one's great because it isn't a trait you're ever going to lose. You will forever have your Father's Legacy and that will give you a bonus to your authority. So it's always worth thinking about if you can get your faction leader to have this trait here, Faction Killer. If your faction leader can take out other factions, he might start picking up the Faction Killer trait. And obviously his son will be the heir. And if you have your heir picking up Father's Legacy for bonus authority, that's going to be a great boon to your empire. Keeping good genetics is absolutely crucial. You don't want to end up with a prince like Tararan over here, who it turns out is a little bit inbred, ugly and slothful. And these can all very much impact your authority going forward, especially should he happen to turn into king anytime soon. Oh no, our faction leader died and now we're left with the strange, ugly, inbred king Tararan got authority of two and that's a little bit familiar isn't it you've got yourself a new king and he's a bit terrible you probably should have killed him before he even got to the throne and am i going to suggest a bit of regicide yes yes i probably am 
Vetting these early candidates for adoptions is a key part of your empire building. And particularly on turn two, you want to think very carefully about who you are accepting into the family. Some of these traits get passed down for generations to come. Now, actually, in this case, this is a benefactor to King Alexander. Particularly crucial because we do not want this to be our faction heir because he's got alcoholic as a trait. Not only is that terrible minus three authority, it's also very easy to pass down from generation to generation. And we really don't want that. So this is obviously going to be a big fat no. There's nothing necessarily wrong about taking up candidates for adoption. Sometimes you get some great generals and it can help plug the gaps, particularly when you're making some quick expansion and you're lacking the generals to fill in all your cities. But of course, you do want to think, is my king actually going to give down good traits or do I want to bring other people into the family? Now, he's got driven here, which is part of the energetic tree. And obviously, energetic is one of those good traits you want to be passing on down. To be honest with you, looking at this chap here, I would probably think I want to be getting all of his children out to try and make use of that good genetic trait. Now we've got the genetics right, we want to think about how we educate the faction air that we have. And one of the key things we're going to do now is look at education and city planning. Because the cities that your leaders are in does impact what their traits are through the game. So for example, if I have my faction air as a governor in a town where I build farms, I have a chance of 100 of getting good farmer too, which of course is great, but let's look at some that involve authority. If we can get our faction heir to build the jousting list, then he'll have a chance of 100 of getting strategy shivery number one, which at stages 3, 4 and 5 will give you extra authority. Obviously if you're going for the chivalry kind of chap, then this is a really good thing to be thinking about. The third key trait we can get this way is authoritarian one. Now that is one that we particularly want to get because it has no going back, which means we can't get non-authoritarian once we pick up this trait. So you want to be able to get this at some point or another. So building town halls is a way you can do that. Now the which chance you get depends on your strategy dread or your strategy chivalry. If you've got none of either, then you have a chance of seven. For the Islamic factions, adding the eunuch to your retinue is a great option. It gives you plus one authority from the start as well as a bit of personal security. And moreover, it's very easy to achieve. All you need to do is build a maze palace and you have a chance of 100. Indeed, you can also do that with a fortress where your chance is 75. Honestly, this is one of the easiest ways that you're going to be able to gain authority. Very simple, but unfortunately it's only for the Islamic factions. We obviously want our factioneers to be building key buildings, but every turn that he sits in a town, there's a chance he'll pick up particular traits. Those traits are influenced by the buildings inside them. So for example, every turn, there's a small chance he might pick up drinking, or gambling, or ask, which I, I believe is kind of effeminacy, and girls, which is to do with them being a little bit lustful. Now these in general are not good traits that you want to be getting, and they do get worse as you go down the particular line of the brothel buildings. You get your chances going up for these very negative traits, and when you go up to Pleasure Palace, you can see here, perverted and corrupt, you can probably imagine are not good at all. That's not to say that sitting around in towns is bad at all. The Jousting list here will be able to get you the trait Tourney Knight, which at level 4 and 5 will get you extra authority. And the same thing goes for the racing track here. If you're in a town with racing track, there's a chance every turn that you will get Horse Racer. And Horse Racer at level 3 will also get you some authority. So it's worth bearing in mind which other buildings are key to gain the authority trait. We want to keep our faction air in those towns. What we want to create is a sort of university city, a place that we can send our factionaires where the chances of them picking up these good traits is as high as possible. So take for example cultures, it's a really good trait to have, it's just inherently good. And if you put yourself in Icona Studio, there's a chance of three that you're going to pick up cultured at the end turn. Now this actually can get multiplied if we start adding in other buildings. The printing press here will add on another chance of five. And indeed, it also gets increased by a university, increasing it by yet another three. A city with an alchemist lab gives you a chance of picking up rhetoric skill one. And that's a particularly useful one because you gain authority at the first stage. Although do be aware, you do become prone to rhetoric once you get that up to level three and you start to actually lose authority. So bear that in mind. But there is another way you can get it, and that's if you have yourself a city hall. With a chance of 10, if you sit in any city with a city hall for long enough, there's a good chance you'll start picking up this very useful trait. The last of the traits you can pick up this way is Prim. Now Prim only has a chance of 4, be it in an Orthodox church, a Catholic church, 
or indeed an Islamic mosque. But the chance of four means you're not really very likely to pick it up, or at least not by aiming to get it anyway. It's the sort of thing that you just kind of hope you get. It is a bit of a double-edged sword, it has pluses and minuses, but if you look at its anti-traits of lewd feck, perverted girls and ass, you probably do want to pick this up, if only to not get those. It is still a decent trait, gives you the authority from the start, but to be honest, it's not one that you have an awful lot of control over. It's important to decide which route your general is going to go down. Is it going to be chivalry or is it going to be dread? If you have yourselves loyal, happy citizens with low tax rates, you're more likely to pick up strategy chivalry. And as you might expect, if you do the opposite, you have yourself a less than loyal and happy set of civilians and you have extortion tax rates, well then you're going to start getting a chance to pick up strategy dread. Indeed, this continues if you have yourselves lots and lots of money and you don't actually go and spend it. Having a big treasury will pick you up negative traits, be it things like embezzler or be it things like strategy dread here as well. That brings us on nicely to city riots and city rebellions, which is a hot pot of opportunities to gain authority, normally on the dreadful scale. So you might actually want to consider inciting some riots and rebellions in order to gain these traits. The most likely of which though is this one here, authoritarian, which all things considered is actually not a bad trait at all. It will raise the unrest, but it will also give you a lot more law. And with the authority, it's not a bad one to start with. Disciplinarian, meanwhile, is a trait we often see for its level 2 trait of Drill Master. Now, that obviously isn't very good. If you're having a Dread character, you don't want to have minus morale. You want them to be in battle, killing lots of people. So I generally don't like this one, albeit if you get to Drill Master, you might as well push it on further, at least gain some authority out of it. Meanwhile, Rabble Rouser is kind of similar, has pluses and minuses. If you get it up to level 3 to gain the authority, great. It's probably not one I'm going to aim for, but if you get it, keep pushing at it, at least it's going to do you some good in the long run. You don't want to spend all of your time in the cities gambling and eating all the pies. No, you want to get out in the field, live a bit of a harsh lifestyle, because luckily that will gain you this trait here, pragmatic. Ending your turn in enemy lands, you have a small chance of gaining one of the best traits here. You should be delighted if you ever pick this one up. It will give you plus to morale and also to your authority. As I said, very unlikely to get, but it's one that you should be delighted if you see come up. There are a few particularly useful retinues you want to look out for, and the first of them is this here, the Brilliant Scribe. The Brilliant Scribe is pretty easy to pick up, of course, and with plus authority and 10% bonus on all trade income, he's a pretty solid piece of retinue. The Biographer, on the other hand, is a little bit harder to get. You will need that command, and you'll have to sit around in the town for a short time, but plus one authority, never a bad thing. Lastly is the Herald, who I particularly like, if only because it's so simple to get. If you build yourself a Citadel, there's a fair chance you'll pick this guy up for one extra authority. That brings us nicely onto part three then, which is all about your actions as a ruler. It's not just how you rule your cities, but also when you go to war. Are you going to be dreadful or are you going to be chivalrous? It's a really important decision to make nice and early on. Now whilst we can make chivalry work, and I'll show you that a bit later, the easiest route is this one here, Strategy Dread. If you like to use agents in your campaign, then Strategy Dread is going to be very easy to come by. Even ordering a spy mission gives you a small chance every time, and a successful assassination gives you a chance of 50. Even if it's unsuccessful, you still have a chance of 25. Bribery is an incredibly efficient way of getting yourself authority. With a chance of 50 to pick up political skill, you're going to get that one pushed up very quickly. And whilst you might see it's a threshold of 5, 10, 15 to get up the three different stages, Politics skill here will actually gain a threshold of 5 from this one action, so you will go straight to Politics skill 1. Deceiver Virtue on the other hand is also quite useful, but do beware you do lose loyalty for it, so if you are already the faction leader, doesn't matter at all, but if you're the factionaire, there's always the chance he could go rogue if he picks this one up too much. It does actually have a counterpart in Chivalry as well, in Victor Virtue. Picking up Victor Virtue on the other hand will lose your personal security and certainly the chivalric route can be a little bit trickier. You've got to win a clear victory in a siege but one which you had a low chance of winning and you still need to be making lots of kills yourself. Now between assassinations, spy missions and bribery, strategy dread can be easy to pick up but strategy chivalry it should be said has an incredibly high chance of coming up if you build yourself religious buildings such as a small church. As long as you haven't already got strategy dread you can pick this one up nice and easily so it is a good way to get yourself started. It's not impossible to go chivalry instead. When you occupy a city you have a chance of 100 to pick up strategy chivalry 1 so you can easily get that up to level 3 although level 4 obviously has a much higher threshold. Pay attention though to the fact that when you have one strategy chivalry, you could also pick up lenient justice and non-authoritarian. 
It might well be worth trying to pick up authoritarian before you get too far down strategy chivalry, albeit the chance of picking up this trait is quite low. Conversely, exterminator population will get you more points towards strategy dread, and this doesn't cap off either. Whilst you might need 16 points to get to the highest level, stage 5, you can keep getting more and more by exterminating populations. Once again, strategy dread is proving to be the easier route. Your behaviour in battle is equally as important to chivalry or dread. If you fight a battle with very high odds in your own favour, you're going to pick up battle dread. And indeed, the converse is true for chivalry. If you take on a battle where you have a low chance of success but you heroically fight on, you're more likely to pick up battle chivalry. It's probably quite obvious to say that if you completely annihilate your opposition, killing over 70% of their forces, you're going to be picking up battle dread. And conversely, battle chivalry is picked up by letting the routing troops leave the battlefield. Although it should be said, if you kill with your general in battle, that is good for both battle dread and battle chivalry. But if you are going for battle chivalry, make sure you picked up level 1 before you go and kill hundreds of people personally in battle. What a brave and battle scarred? Well, you can probably assume what those are all about. It's about taking hits in battle and delivering some damage yourself. So, for example, it says here if you lose more than 0.3 of your HP, you have a certain chance of gaining battle scarred and a certain chance of gaining brave. And indeed, these are particular traits we see come up in our generals quite a lot. But you'll notice that the further you push it, the better chance you have. So, it's up to 60 this time. If you kill more than 6 in battle, you lose over half of your health. So obviously you can be able to see what your general looks like, see the stab wounds in him, and I guess that gives you a little bit of a chance to um, just push this a little bit close to the line. But yeah, it can be a dangerous game, but it can really pay off with the authority. Both Battle Scarred and Brave are useful whether you are Chivalric or Dready. Now this is a young faction air here, currently not Chivalric or Dready, but I'm going to show you how early on in the game you can take some good chances to get yourself a fantastic Chivalric leader. You can always go down the Dready route later. Now luckily healthy means that we can really push both Marks of War and Brave onwards to gain authority that way. And actually you might have noticed that he obviously does have the Handsome as his epithet, and obviously being physically flawless will give him plus one authority. We've already got some decent starts to our character. If we want to develop these two traits here then what we want to do is get into battle and a crusade is the ideal way to do it. You're going to gain extra chivalry for completing it but it's also going to give you that opportunity to develop your traits further. More importantly though we've got the timing just right. There are a certain set of retinue, this one being one, whereby you can gain some authority. Now, some of them are very specific with their timing and their triggers. You can go have a look at, look at those in the data files. But for us, we've got this just perfect. He's gained himself an extra bit of authority, and we're ready to go off on Crusade. As we go to finish off this Crusade, then we need to think about what will be the chivalric action, and of course, occupying is going to be our best bet. I've got a little bit lucky here because I've got a nice nearby settlement that's already going to be Catholic. Occupy. And I'm going to find myself a lot better. <laughs> yes, Count Catalonia, the Crusader. He's gone up from zero chivalry just a moment ago, up to eight already. And indeed, if we start looking along, he's picking up some great bits of retinue here. But hopefully, he actually hasn't on this occasion, but hopefully he will also gain a bit of authority through those traits getting better. Grand Crusader, chivalrous in rule. If we continue some of our escapades, we'll be able to get a great legacy for this man. And if our faction leader were to have himself a little bit of an accident over in Sardinia, oh, that would be a shame now, wouldn't it? Because that would mean our fantastic chap would now be king. Oh, yes, Duke Catalano the Crusader over here. Decent bit of command, but he's got eight chivalry and seven authority. He's not doing too bad whatsoever. And this, this is a character who looked fairly average just a few turns ago. And very quickly I've managed to turn him into a fantastic faction leader. And obviously you don't need to go kill off your king quite so soon. But this does give you a great chance to start building a legacy. And it does show you, particularly at the start of the game, that you can get yourself high authority along with the high chivalry. There's a couple of ancillaries it's also worth picking up, which are Ornate Armour and Torturer. Now, Ornate Armour isn't necessarily one you're looking for because it is minus two to the hit point. Maybe you want this for a chivalric chap instead. Maybe he's not going to be in so many battles. Plus one authority, but obviously you've got to take those hit points. I'm quite healthy, so that isn't too much of a problem for me. The other one here is Torturer. Torturer is amazing. Plus three to Dread. Plus one to Authority, of course. X Security. A bit of Unrest, but plus three to Law. This guy is amazing. 
Before we finish up for today then, I'll show you where I've got all this information from, which is inside the data file of Medieval 2 Total War. So once you open that up, if you go down to the bottom, you'll find the export underscore desk ancillaries. So that will tell you all about the retinue, and then you also have export desk character traits. So these are basically the two files that tell me everything about it, and if you want to find out more, that's where you need to look. That being said though, you will need to use the unpacker file, although I do have a video on how to make that happen. So if you do follow that in the link in the description below, you'll be able to find all of the files you want in data. That's all for now then, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on this guide to authority in Medieval 2 Total War. I hope you've learned a little bit of how to increase this trait here. And of course, it is a bit of an unusual one because you only really find out normally once they become king. But if you really take care of those factionaires, you can make them incredibly powerful, even if you have to drown a load of children to do so. I'm sure you can make it work. We've all done it in Crusader Kings too. We can do it in Medieval 2 as well, damn it. But yes, whether you want to be dready or chivalric, it is actually surprisingly easy to gain yourself authority, but you do need to pay attention and really take care of those factionaires. But anyway, I will leave it for now. I'm Thomas, this is Tenez the Human, and this has been our Games Guide to Traits and Authority in Medieval 2 Total War. Thank you, and goodbye. By Jave, it is a marvellous, marvellous day. Spiffin, one would say. Anyone for pimps. He has seen the light. He's joined the anarchy. He is cruel and cunning. And you know what? He likes a little drink, and I think that's marvellous. La 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 la, chop your way through the peasants. One shot! No!